Hey guys, and welcome to week 12 of Upfront Gaming News, where we've got quite a bit to dig into today. Um, a lot of it uh, is going to be some pretty interesting um, topics that I hope will spark some conversation uh, as we go into the comments questions section and uh, try and get you guys as involved as possible. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So PlayStation this week um, for the biggest release, we have Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Check out the trailer and we'll be right back. Hunger may beget a fine shinobi. I expected no less from you, my boy. Sir. I see bad Listen, Wolf, you must never forget the Iron Code. I see bad Defend your master with your life. If he is taken, Bring him back at any cost. I see Shinobi stands in our way. It seems fate still doesn't want you dead. guys so that was Sekiro Shadows Die Twice uh, looks really good um, it's also a cross-platform uh, we know for a fact that it's obviously coming out on Xbox um, so definitely check that out um, let's just dive right into the news so PlayStation is a little bit slim this week um, but overall still some good information I don't generally cover controllers or anything like that um, but there's a new Alpine green and white controller um, that's joining the DualShock 4 lineup next month. It's $64.99 in the U.S. and Canada. And the way they've done the color scheme, it actually looks really cool. Um, so if you're looking for a new controller, that might be your next best bet. Um, the, uh, the next piece for PlayStation is going to be American Fugitive. Um, it's an open world action sandbox coming this year. Um, it's updated, uh, it almost looks like the original GTA type overhead play. Um, it definitely looks worth the buy. Um, it's the abilities there, obviously you've broken out of prison, um, you feel framed, and uh, you're able to break into any building in the world. Um, there's driving and fighting, all, all the cops are on your tail. So it looks really, really interesting. Um, and I'm hoping to see more 
uh, as we get closer to its release date, which uh, as I've seen right now is, is not uh, published. So uh, there is a trailer out, take a look at that. It actually looks really good. Um, so definitely dive into that if you're interested in that sort of thing. So let's move on to Xbox. Uh, this is where we found our, our very um, interesting news this week. So uh, without further ado, the biggest release this week that we saw, um, minus Sekiro, obviously, uh, The Sinking City. And so their trailers were a little bit uh, scarce as far as what was available. But we did find kind of a, um, a guide to what to expect from The Sinking City. Uh, so we're going to play that now. Just uh, enjoy, and we'll get back into the news from Xbox and the controversy here in just a minute. Hello, and welcome to The Sinking City. A game of investigation and mystery set in a twisted Lovecraftian version of the 1920s United States. It follows the story of Charles Reed, a great war veteran and private eye from Boston, who is fighting an uphill battle against terrible insanity. While looking for a cure, Reed finds himself in Oakmont, Massachusetts, a city devastated by supernatural flood, monsters, and madness. In pursuit of his goals, Charles will have to face terrors beyond human comprehension and investigate occurrences simply unimaginable in a normal society. I apologize for my bluntness, but can I ask you a question? Mouth? Yeah. Punishment. Long story. With The Sinking City, we put the detective experience first. This means zero hand-holding from the game. There are no straightforward tasks and no objectives on the map to follow. We will never tell you how to approach a quest, where you should go, what to look for, who you should accuse. You shot to kill. No warning, no second chances. You pursued Albert even after he fled. Why? Those apes hated us from the moment we arrived in Oakmont. Our home was destroyed. We just needed a place to stay. As you explore crime scenes and find evidence, all information goes into your trusted casebook. Here, you can review and analyze it, if you're in need of a eureka moment. Some evidence is pretty straightforward, lying around the gruesome consequences of someone's misdeeds. Others need a more intricate approach. In Oakmont, the veil between the mundane and supernatural is especially thin. Mr. Reed himself is no stranger to the paranormal. In fact, he has some useful tricks up his sleeve that can reveal the spell-covered traces of morally impaired perpetrators. I surrender. Take me and let my people leave. One of these skills, retrocognition, allows him to sneak a peek beyond the veil. Extremely useful, it helps understand what exactly happened and how, if you're clever enough to crack this riddle. And if you know detectives, you know how much time they spend doing research. So don't be too shy to talk to fellow lawmen. Let me be frank, newcomer. You ain't welcome. You slip up, don't cross a T or dot an I, and I'll treat you like every other criminal here. Um, never mind. Reed is a stranger in a strange land. Anyhow, most institutions in the city are in complete disarray. You can still use their records, which is a lifesaver for a detective in need. Keep in mind that the different institutions provide different knowledge. Think where to look, and you'll crack your case in no time. But what is investigation without the ability to piece clues together and try out different theories? That's what Mind Palace is for. The fans' favorite feature from our Sherlock Holmes games makes a comeback. But unlike Sherlock, the sinking city has no right or wrong answers, just different shades of black. So, if you're about to destroy someone's life, well, Make sure you have a damn good reason. So, as you can see, at its core, The Sinking City is an investigation game. We want you to feel like a real detective, digging up all the dirty secrets this wretched place likes to keep hidden. 
So let us know what you think about this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright guys, that was the Sinking City. Again, looks really interesting. It looks like um, something that you can really dive into um, and be, be engaged in because there's no there's no points on a map that you follow. There's no uh, mission guidance. It's just you kind of chase it down yourself, which I think is very intriguing, um, but could make for a very long gaming experience if you don't have any clue or you can't you know kind of read into where you have to be um but overall that may be the very thing that's appealing uh when it comes to the sinking city so very interesting i kind of want to see how it plays out um but that is coming out on march 21st oh and i forgot to mention so Sekiro shadows die twice that's coming out on the 22nd um just so you're aware now um Let's dive into uh, the news for Xbox. So Anthem has been has had a very bad um, release, and I'll say in some circles, some people like it because of you know they they found things to be entertained by uh, when it comes to Anthem. However. There was five things, and there's still five things that just kind of killed Anthem as it's been um, since its release. So uh, the release date, for starters, was one of those five things. Um, there was a chart to explain kind of when you could play based on what membership you bought. However, like that's still kind of confusing. I mean, if you've got a if you got to dig into a chart to see when you'll be able to play the game, I mean, why? Like, I get it. There's different tiers, different things are going to release, and that that's kind of based on your purchase as well uh, as far as what content you get. So it, it just seems to me like it's more one of those Activision schemes where, you know, if you paid this tier, you'll get X amount. Um, and along the way, there's probably several microtransactions. I didn't get involved in Anthem. I originally had it pre-ordered and I scrapped it due to all of the messes with the demo, etc. Um, so the second thing that they had issues with were, was, the, was technical issues. Um, so there were crashes on PS4 and bugs that could have been fixed before the game's release face it they they did a demo they did a early release and they still didn't have the bugs fixed upon the time that the game's release date came to be so why is the main question they they had the time they could have pushed back the release date it probably would help them a lot to have delved into what was the issues and main issues within the game so that they could get those cleared up prior to release. And they just didn't do that. Um, so on Bioware and EA, that's that's kind of, it, it's sloppy. Um, learning from others. Uh, Bioware and you know EA published, so Bioware, this is more on Bioware. Um, they didn't seize the opportunity to learn from other games in the genre and where they had messed up and things that they could do to succeed tremendously when they release this game. And it's sad because this could have been very, very um, explosive as a release title. And it just, it, everything that's against it did not make that a reality for BioWare and EA. Um, you know, maybe they'll be able to fix it, but in cases like this, I mean, look at like No Man's Sky and some of these other titles that have come out and just fell on their face due to false expectations or, you know, anything like that. It's very hard to come back from when your release is in the toilet. Um, the last two that they had uh, issues with and still have issues with is cross-platform play. This is one of those games where that should have been a target. Um, 
you want people to be able to play together, so why not hit this from different fronts and have people on the Xbox version, the uh, PC version, etc., be able to play in the same area? That way, you know, you're opening more doors for those gamers that that want to have the multiplayer experience. But again, if you noted just, I don't want to say we did maybe four weeks ago, um, that your first your first playthrough should be single player anyway due to complications with communications, etc. within Anthem. So maybe it, maybe it wasn't worth it. I mean, in the end, or maybe it still will be, but they still have a lot to work on to make this game uh, up to par with the promises. The last thing, Bioware made this. They're, this is not their genre. Um, but at the same time, Bioware is somebody you look at as, okay, well, this is going to be a great game. You know, if I look at um, companies out there like Ubisoft and whatnot, I know it's going to be a great game because they're good at what they do. But Bioware being attached to this is just another thing that makes you go really like you you're skilled at what you do people buy games because bioware is involved but yet here you've completely dropped the ball i'm hoping this isn't uh something that tarnishes bioware in a way that you know as they go forward they've got this big old black mark on their face for this release however it's hard to tell because you know some gamers will pick up a game initially because they like the concept like anthem and anthem may be the first bioware game you've ever played in which case you're completely tarnished on what bioware is capable of and that's sad but Needless to say, that's my little rant on Anthem uh, when it comes to this week and the news from Xbox. Hopefully they can fix it. Alright, the last piece within Xbox this week is cross-play standard. Um, Xbox is already opening doors with Nintendo. They already had cross-play with PC. I mean, why wouldn't they? Um... Sony's market position makes it very easy for Sony to say no. They dominated the console market, and whether or not you want to believe that because you're a fanboy or whatever, Sony owned the last console generation, or this console generation, I should say, because the new one's not out yet. They dominated exclusive titles and overall sales as a whole. So, you can't deny the fact that Sony had a good place in the market with the PS4. Now, PS5, that may be a different story. There's no ties uh, when it comes to crossplay on launching exclusives within your market. So that doesn't affect what Sony already does really well. So maybe when it comes to the PS5, Sony will have a change of heart and allow for that crossplay to happen between Sony, Xbox, Nintendo, PC, etc. Now, here's the thing. I think it would be great, and I I love Sony, I really do. Um, I think they do great things, but I think that every system out there does great things in their own way. Now, when it comes down to it, Sony joining cross-platform would be awesome because you'd open so many more doors for online players to engage in a community across platforms and have a good time playing games. And that's what we're all here to do, is enjoy our games. Whether you're on Xbox, Nintendo, or PC, we should still all be able to play together and have fun. That's what this is all about. So I really hope for it because I think that um, Sony has kind of closed that door uh, on the PS4. However, again, they could afford to take that hit because they 
they don't need it. It's not a it's not a selling point when you have the most exclusives on the market um, and that you've done well as a whole uh, with this generation. So maybe with the next generation, they will change their minds. However, we'll see. But I'm looking forward to whatever news comes of this because it is very intriguing. And I mean, I find it hard sometimes to find the right group of people to play certain games with on just Sony if I'm playing my my PlayStation 4. So um, again, very interested. We'll see where this goes. Um, all right, so let's move into Nintendo. Uh, pretty pretty slim news this week, but let's start with the trailer for American Ninja Warrior. We'll be right back. For everyone. He's the moment of truth. Yes! Oh, He's really starting to feel it now, getting in his group. Unbelievable effort. This mount was not easy, but he made it look easy. You can feel the energy. So strong, plenty of energy. The fingertips are great recovery. Made the leap. Skipping a step. Yes! Now this is the moment of truth. And wasting no time on the war flow right up. These fans are Yeah, so that was American Ninja Warrior that's available across all three platforms. Um, it looks like a good concept, but I think this is going to be one of those games that you can pick up, knock out, and be done with it. There's 10 seasons within the game. It just, it, I don't know if it's going to live up to the hype. I mean, we've all seen the show. There's only so much you can do. Eventually, it'll get old. It'll be one of those that if you do purchase it to get all the trophies, achievements, etc., um, it may be, you know, get it and and then just turn around and return it. Hopefully, you buy the physical disc copy so you can at least get some credit off of it if this is something you want to purchase. Um, however, it does look like true to the concept, so um, we'll see. Maybe maybe I'll uh, I'll find a way to play it and give a better stance on it later. Um, let's dive into Nintendo's news. Again, very slim this week. Um, but these were a couple things that we found interesting. Uh, so there's a new Octopath, Octopath Traveler game coming to the Switch. The original JRPG was received well on Switch. Um, so they've decided to release uh, a new Octopath Traveler game. However, no details on the release time yet. Uh, they've only confirmed that this is in fact coming. So if you played the original and you're looking forward to this, well then uh, you've definitely got something uh, coming in the future. However, again, we don't know that release date. So if I do find that release date, uh, as soon as it comes out, I'll implement it into the news for those of you that are interested in knowing when that comes out. Now, um, the last piece of news this week for Nintendo is just that uh, Sega confirmed a new Sonic game is in development. Duh. Um, it is Sega. Sonic is kind of their flagship character. So that's kind of a no-brainer. However, it is coming for all three platforms and has nothing to show on it yet. So Sega showed up at South by Southwest and revealed nothing. There was a uh, tweet that came out that just basically said, uh, new Sonic game in the works, nothing to show as of yet. So, um, we'll keep track of that story as we go forward and maybe we'll see something in the near future as far as what that game is going to look like if you're interested in a new Sonic game. Uh, that's it for this week. So, a um, couple things. First off, I, I promised that we would do our release 
of uh, what our end of month video is going to be. Excuse me. Um, and this month, what we're going to do is kind of dive a little into what has come out in the last couple months in regards to the new console market, uh, because we've been kind of quiet on that for the last couple months when it comes to the new Xbox and the new PS5. So we're going to dive into that at the end of the month and see what's happening when it comes to um, the releases and also what's further been confirmed when Sony's uh, event is going to take place, being that they're not taking part in E3 this year, as well as whatever we can find on Xbox Anaconda and Maverick. So, uh, oh, Lockhart, Maverick actually is almost out. My bad, recant that. Um, okay, so that is it. So leave your questions, comments. Uh, I really am intrigued by this whole crossplay thing. And of course, uh, the Anthem discussion. So if you want to get involved in that, please leave your comments below. I would love to uh, kind of get into some uh, opinionated uh, banter when it comes to those two things. So again, hopefully you enjoy this week's video. This is uh, week 12. So uh, trucking along. So um, yeah, leave your questions, comments. Hopefully you enjoyed this week's video. You got something out of the three trailers and the information that we've uh, put out. And we will see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Upfront Gaming News. And we will see you very, very soon. Bye.